Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Leong King Hong and I'm a rheumatologist in private practice. I also teach medicine at the Yong Le Lin School of Medicine at NUS. But first, let me tell you who a rheumatologist is. A rheumatologist is an internal medicine specialist in diseases of bones and joints, including arthritis. And that's why today, I'd like to help you answer some of the most searched questions on the web. Okay, so let's start with the first question. And the first question is, uh, what is arthritis? But to explain that, uh, let me show you this model. So arthritis is actually a problem of the joints. And what is a joint is the, the thing that is between two bones. Right, so when you eat the chicken drumstick, actually you see this silvery thing, that's a cartilage, right? So when you have two bones and in between, uh, there's a piece of cartilage. And if something goes wrong with the cartilage, that's arthritis. Right, and the next question is, what causes arthritis? Well, there are many different causes. It ranges from wear and tear in the joint. You know, as a person gets older, if they've had an old injury to the joint, the joint wears out. On the other hand, there are other things like crystals which form and irritate the joint, such as gout. Or it could even be the immune system, which is supposed to protect you, can end up attacking your own joint. So there are so many different causes. Right, and then we have this question, uh, which says, what are the types of arthritis? Well, essentially, there are two types. Remember we said arthritis is a problem of the joint. So the first type is when that piece of cartilage becomes thinner and thinner and it wears out. So that's a wear and tear type of arthritis. And the next type is the opposite, you know, where the cartilage in fact becomes swollen and inflamed. So there's inflammation in your joint. These are the two main types, a wear and tear type and an inflammation type. Okay, and then the next question is this, which says, which body part is commonly affected by arthritis? Well, this depends on the underlying problem. You remember just now we were saying that there are two types, the wear and tear type and the inflammation type. So for the wear and tear type, you imagine that the, the joints that support your weight will tend to be more affected. So this would include things like your, your knees or your spine, sometimes your hips. And then there are specific diseases like gout, which attack the lower limbs, especially the big toe. And this, I'm sure you commonly see this in cartoon strips and movies. Huh? People with gout, they get this swollen big toe, right? And then, of course, the autoimmune diseases. Well, they tend to attack small joints like your finger joints or your toe joints. So really, which part is affected depends on the underlying disease. And in fact, it is a point that we use as doctors to make a diagnosis. Okay, and next. Who are most likely to suffer from arthritis? Well, again, this comes back to what the underlying problem is. So for instance, for wear and tear arthritis, you imagine that the older people will be more affected because the joints start to wear out as you get older. Then for certain diseases like gout, they tend to attack the lower limbs, especially the big toe. And then these people also tend to have other diseases like high blood pressure and cholesterol and diabetes. And then for the autoimmune diseases, they tend to attack young people, not old people. And they also tend to affect females more than males. A bit unfair to our ladies, but unfortunately it's true. Autoimmune diseases are more common in females generally. Okay, and then next you have, when should I seek medical help for arthritis? Well, I guess if the problem bothers you a lot and you've tried different things and you don't know what's the problem, then seeking medical help will come to the correct diagnosis. That's the first thing. But there are certain red flag symptoms you should look out for and this will indicate inflammation in your joints because inflammation in the joints, if you don't fix it early enough, it may destroy your joints rapidly. So the red flag signals are swelling. If your joint swells, uh, there's usually something wrong. right? And the second symptom is if you are worse in the morning. So let's say you go to bed in the morning, you're worse and you take a few hours to get better. Uh, that's also a red flag signal because that indicates inflammation in your joints. Okay, and so now the last question on this board is this. How is arthritis treated? Well, I'd like to say that as a principle, there are two sets of treatments. The first set is to treat the symptoms, of course, to relieve the suffering. It's through painkillers, through physiotherapy and all that. But this is a short-term solution. The longer-term, more important solution is to fix the underlying problem. So for instance, if a patient has gout, and not only do you treat the flare when it flares up very badly, but you have to try to drive the uric acid to below a certain level so that crystals won't form anymore and then there'll be no more gout attacks. Similarly, in something like autoimmune diseases, the crucial thing is to stop the immune system from attacking the patient. 
And nowadays, there are so many very good medicines that do that, some of which are like targeted therapies. You know, they like magic bullets, they only target the proteins that are at fault. And, and when the immune system is calm, the patient will not get arthritis anymore and they will not get damaged joints. So really, no one should get damaged joints nowadays from autoimmune inflammatory arthritis. Okay, and so it seems you have answered all the questions here on this board, so I guess we are done for the day. Oh, there's another one. Okay. So it just goes to show that people like to Google for all these kind of questions, right? So just a few more to answer, if you don't mind. So the next one here is, when do I need surgery for arthritis? Ah, okay, so again, going back to our wear and tear type and the inflammation type, in the wear and tear type, it gets, gets really bad sometimes, you know, so much so that the patient is stuck in the house and they function very poorly. So in that setting, some very important surgery can be done, especially total joint replacement, right? It sounds a bit frightening, but really it works well, especially for the knees and the hips. So you can change the whole joint to a new artificial joint, and, and that makes a big difference to the patient. All right, and then, and then the next question is, does cracking my knuckles cause arthritis? Well, this is actually very commonly asked uh, in seminars and all that when we give talks. Uh, because there's this noise, so people get worried, like, will it damage my joints? But essentially, noisy joints without pain is actually okay, you know? It's just the movement of certain structures over the bone. But if you have a noisy joint that's also painful, uh, then it's a problem. And so to answer this question, cracking your knuckles shouldn't cause arthritis. Okay, and so next question. Oh, this is a question about exercise. What exercises and for how long uh, is it recommended to help alleviate or manage arthritis? Well, arthritis, or rather exercise, is a very important part of the management of arthritis. In general, good aerobic fitness is, is helpful. But there are also specific exercises the patient needs to do. You know, for, for example, if the knee is worn out, then the patient would be taught exercises to strengthen the thigh muscles because it's the thigh muscles that help the knee to function. And if it's a back problem, then uh, exercise like swimming is very good because it strengthens the back muscles. But of course, uh, it's always best to also seek help from a physiotherapist who will guide the patient in, in the program to strengthen all the relevant muscles. And so it's true that exercise is very important in almost all types of arthritis. Okay, and now we come really to the last question, which is... Ah, is there food that I should avoid taking for arthritis? This is really very commonly asked, you know, of us. And that's because I think among all the arthritis that we talked about, gout is the most famous. And so a lot of people think that if you have arthritis or joint pains, there are a lot of foods that you should avoid. But really the truth is that this is true only for gout. You know, in gout, you have to avoid certain specific foods. But for other types of arthritis, this is really not so important. However, for all kinds of arthritis, you should try not to have excessive food intake because then you put on weight and then you load your joints and that's going to be bad, especially for the wear and tear arthritis. And so the quick summary of this answer is that, uh, is there food to avoid? Yes, for gout, there are specific foods to avoid. For other kinds of arthritis, it's just a matter of weight control, not eating too much. And so we've come to the end of our session and we've answered quite a lot of the questions that people normally go to the web for. I hope you found them, uh, found the answers to be uh, beneficial to you. If you have further comments and questions, please uh, put it in the chat box below. So thank you very much and goodbye.